This is Bobby Rempke from Cleveland, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We originate from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. This is the barbecue capital of the North Coast. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here for the show. If you have always thought to yourself you would love to get in contact with the show via the emails, but you don't know the email address, so you're a little shorthanded, let me help you out with that. You can get in touch with the show by sending an email to greg at bbqcentralshow.com or on the Twitter and Instagrams at bbqcentralshow. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's tap on the show, or here's what's on tap for the show. (laughs) First time with my new mouth. Coming up in about 12 minutes from now, he is the director of marketing for Traeger Wood Fired Grills Barbecue Division. He is the pit master for Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit. And from time to time, you would see him hosting Whiskey. I'm sorry. He's the pit master for the Whiskey Bent Barbecue competition team. And from time to time, you would find him hosting his own internet based barbecue and grilling talk show, Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit. Chad Ward will be joining me. Anxious to catch up with Chatters. See what's happening with the wood-fired grills over at Traeger. Talk a little competition barbecue. Of course, Traeger is going to be sponsoring NBBQA in some form or fashion. I'm going to be going there in mid-March as well, so we'll see what they have planned in that regard and a whole bunch of other stuff to get to. Maybe some 2018 trend predictions from Chad as well. And then at 35 past the first hour, we will be joined by one of the longest semi-recurring guests here on this show, although it's not a tremendous amount of recurrence. You do see him here from time to time, usually good for about a segment, a year, maybe two, depending on what things are shaking out and what his availability is. In my estimation, he is a definition of a barbecue living legend, a competitive barbecue cook. He has given cooking class instructions And I guess most importantly, or the thing that really is his calling card, is this little thing called the FE100 and the FE Style brand of cookers, now through Cook Shack. None other than Fast Eddie himself, Ed Marn, will be joining me at 35 past. So looking forward to catching up with Fast Eddie and seeing what he's up to, see what his thoughts on the pellet cooker market are. You would recall... You know, all the way back in 2007, I think, was the first time he made an appearance here on this show 11 years ago. And it was not a fad, but it certainly wasn't anywhere near the type of popularity that pellet grills are experiencing these days, and especially over the last handful of years. So anxious to get Fast Eddie's take on the pellet grill industry, and of course, got to ask him about competition barbecue as well. So look for Ed Moore in 35 past. Then we'll move into the second hour. And uh, 14 minutes past the second hour, we will start what is the fourth Tuesday second hour standby segment or segments. That is the embedded correspondence segment. We'll be joined by Doug Scheiding, embedded Texas correspondent, Steve Ray, Tennessee, embedded correspondent, and David Huff, Oklahoma, embedded correspondent, and get their 
ideas, thoughts, or as we've called it, hot takes as it relates to something in the barbecue and grilling world and or industry. It doesn't have to be competition related, although from time to time, we do talk a lot of competition when those guys are on because all three of them are competition cooks of varying levels and success. But it's not always about competition barbecue when you get to this show. So somebody might have an outside-the-box take. I might have an outside-the-box take as we're talking. And that will take the balance of the second hour. So Chad Ward, Ed Morin, first hour, second hour embedded correspondence. Your emails as well, should you see fit, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. All right, let me ask you to do me a favor, regardless of how you are consuming this show right now. If you are a, uh, if you are a subscriber on some type of podcast platform, that be iTunes or Google or whatever type of podcast catcher you might use on your particular device, after you hit subscribe, or maybe you subscribe and you've never taken the time to rate and review the show, do two things. Either pause and go right now. Well, if you're listening to it in a podcast, if you're watching live right now, don't do anything. Take in the show as it happens. You'll thank me later. If you're listening to this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever, and you're listening to it on your podcast platform, hit pause, go to rate and review, leave me a comment. Leave me an honest comment. I don't want anybody just unnecessarily giving me five stars for no good reason. So, hey, do that for me. It gives visibility to the show. We are ranked in the top 50 of all food-related podcasts here over the last handful of weeks. So very excited for that in iTunes. I'm really not sure how you find ratings in Google, but I guess I don't really care that much. So do that for me. That would be a great big help. I thank you in advance for that. Or you're getting a question here in the chat room, and I knew I would be getting a lot of interest in this shirt right here. Take a look at it. Hashtag Meat Man, courtesy of The Best Barbecue Show, which is also a podcast. I don't want to delineate between what's a show and what's a podcast. Best Barbecue Show is a podcast that uses show in the name The Barbecue Central Show is a show. It's live. It's produced. It's segmented out. We're covering varying topics in the barbecue and grilling world, various people of varying celebrity status, and it's also being recorded to be put up in a podcast. So that's kind of how I delineate is it a live show that's just being recorded for convenience for the people that can't get it live, or is it really just a recording slash podcast? And you put show in the name. Hey, show's exciting. Anything can really be a show. But if we're being honest, Barbecue Central show is a show. And a lot of the other podcasts that have show in their name are really just podcasts because they're not live. Anyway, big shout out to Stover, of course. And got to say it, my man Yanni for hooking me up with the big hashtag meat man t-shirt. Again, let me give you a, a quick look. And really, it's simplicity and genius in its design. Very simple, very straightforward. What are you? I'm a hashtag meat man. I do subscribe to the Best Barbecue Show, so I'm very excited to be a hashtag meat man corporal or G.I. Joe, if you will. An infantry of the hashtag meat man movement. So thanks again to Stover and Yanni for the hookup on the t-shirt, happily wearing it. I haven't even had time to put it in the wash yet, so it's still kind of got that fresh, weirdo fabric smell that you get with new t-shirts. So I'm excited to wear it around. Have people ask me about hashtag meat, man. Why not? Also, a couple things I wanted to get out of the way. Congratulations to Steph Franklin from Simply Marvelous Barbecue for winning the Smithfield Guinea Pig slash Matt Dalton Memorial this past weekend in California. The genie coming through, going to show that, of course, the West Coast offense is still dominant, especially out there in the West Coast. You have Big Papa Smokers rubs. You have simply Marvelous Barbecue rubs, which is what Steph owns. You mix them together. You got West Coast offense. Been winning and winning and winning for years. Top teams in the industry using the West Coast offense, however they see fit. 
to help them get the calls and the overall wins and reserves and all that stuff. So congratulations to Steph. And from what I hear, another very successful guinea pig style competition put on by Smithfield. Again, the Matt Dalton Memorial. Also this past weekend, results of the Houston Livestock and Rodeo are in. And taking Grand Champ overall, believe it or not, barbecue legend Jamie Gear of Jambo Pit fame. He's cooking with buns and roses. Had a combined 258 total points of the 300 total possible. Second place had 257.33, so less than seven-tenths of a point separates one and two. Very hotly contested. So congratulations to Jamie Gear. I was booked up, otherwise I was going to effort him. Been a minute since we've talked to Jamie Gear, famed pitmaster. Jambo Pits. Chad Ward coming up out of the break. Stick with me here. I'm going to talk to you quickly about Cook Shack. They manufacture smoker ovens for barbecue lovers with any amount of experience. Whether you barbecue in the backyard on the competition scene or in a five-star dining facility, Cook Shack has the unit that will do the job. And with a full line of barbecue sauces, spices, pellets, and wood chunks, it's the perfect one-stop shop. Cook Shack strives to be your barbecue resource center by offering cooking classes, online recipes, how-to videos, two blogs, smoke and grilling 101s, and a video cooking classroom. Check out their website at cookshack.com or follow them on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+. Get advice and share your passion for barbecue on their world-class barbecue forum. They still have a barbecue forum, believe it or not. Cook Shack pellet-fired smokers, which we will talk about in the second segment, are the choice of champions because they were designed by a champion, Ed Fast Eddie Morin. The FEC 100, PG 1000, always customer favorites. The PG 1000 can double as a smoker and a grill. Low and slow, hot and fast, the pellet grill line gives you the most for your money. Now, maybe you don't like pellet cookers. You just want something electric. Great news. Cook Shack's residential electric smokers are the number one smoker in that industry segment. High quality means high durability and versatility. Anything you can make in your oven, you can make it a Cook Shack. Passion and dedication drives Cook Shack's manufacturing with quality always being at the forefront. Get the best in barbecue since 1962. Call 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698 or visit the website cookshack.com. That's cookshack.com. All right, Chad Ward from Traeger Grills and Whiskey Bend Barbecue coming up out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Casting live from the Barbecue Central Show Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Butcher Barbecue, makers of award-winning injections, marinades, rubs, seasonings, barbecue sauce, and grilling oils. All of Butcher Barbecue products have been tested on the competition circuit as well as in backyards worldwide. Be the pit master of your neighborhood. Be the king of your cul-de-sac. And visit ButcherBBQ.com to stock up now. Always trust your butcher. All right, my first guest tonight, the Director of Marketing Barbecue Division for Traeger Grills. He is also a competition barbecue cook with Whiskey Bent Barbecue. Also, the host of a barbecue talk show called Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit. Let's go ahead and head to the Traeger Grills hotline. And welcome back, friend of the show, Chad Ward. Chadley, how are you, buddy? What's Hey, Greg. Great to be here, man. How are you tonight? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Chad. Appreciate you making time for the show, as always. And I know you're like an extra special busy man here recently. So first and foremost, I think the last time we were talking, it was Chad Ward recently installed as the marketing guru for Traeger. You got some time in now. 
give me your thoughts. Where is the job meeting expectation? What's the good? What's the bad? What do you like? What do you hate? Lay it down. No, it's uh man, we're we're over eighteen months in now. It's yep. it's it's awesome. I mean, it's great to work with the folks we have at Traeger. At the same time, there's just a lot to get done, you know. So it uh, you know, I I did two hundred and five days on the road last year. I just got off a nineteen day tour with thirty six hours home. Um, but man, I'm getting the opportunity to do what I love. I can't be upset about that at all. And it's it's for a brand that I truly believe in and I love working for. You've been able, while you've been on these roads 200 plus days, it's like you're a WWF wrestler doing house shows <laughs> and WWF Raw at the same time. You've been able to meet some pretty entertaining entertainment and sports luminaries here over the last 12, 13, 14 months. Who's been the most surprising in a good way that you came across? Um, you know, I, I got to go back to Dan Patrick. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, and, and me and you that, you know, guys that, that just love DP, yep. he's a, he's a, he's a great guy. And, you know, as someone that in my early teens, like disobeyed my dad's, Hey, lights out TV out and would stay up and watch him and Keith Oberman. <laughs> yeah. But then get to meet him years later and and cook his Christmas party and hang out with him, uh, yeah. That that to me is the one. I, I wouldn't say it's a surprise. It's probably just the most. It's the coolest one. I would say. Is it? I guess it would have to be refreshing from your standpoint because when you listen or you've been a fan of somebody for so long, years and years, and you kind yeah. of was, you kind of almost uh, put certain expectations on them, although you've never right. met them before. That's not necessarily yeah. fair. So when you <laughs> meet them and they're absolutely cool or perhaps even exceeding expectation, it's got to be a little extra sweet. No, it, it's, it's super awesome. And then to meet him, his wife, his kids, the family, they're just all super humble and, and just great folks. And and yeah, it, that, that to me has been super cool to do. Um, another one, I, if I had to give you a one A after that, yeah. Stone Cold, Stone Cold Steve Austin, of course, right? That's and that, 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 that. yeah. How many times do you get to hang out at that dude's house for a couple of hours and just get to you know he? I, I don't know, man. It, it, it was just super interesting from the fact of like just learning more about you know his business and what he was in and. And what all that looks like, and, and it was, yeah, that was interesting. But those two guys right there, top of the rung, man. And, and once again, I got to thank Traeger for the opportunity because, um, but but it, but it's been cool. And and the fact of being able to develop friendships with them, that's so over the top of that. So those are like two of the coolest guys. Who's the biggest bag that you've ran into? Man, I'm, I will tell you what, I haven't really... Hit a bag yet? Really? And, 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 Come no, on, I, honestly, lay it down. <laughs> that, that is that is not me going political or going corporate. It's you know we we try to vet folks that we're going to do things with. Yeah. And I, and I haven't hit one that's been just like, oh dude, why you got to be such a, a, a an ass? You know what I mean? I, I have not ran across one yet. But if I do, I'm going to call into the hotline, even if you don't have me time, and I will let you know, Greg Grimpy. All right, I appreciate that. Chad Ward joining me here on the show, Traeger Grills. TraegerGrills.com, by the way, if you want to check it out here while we're talking it up. Chad, last time you were on, we were talking about just the fresh launch of the Traeger Grills Timberline product line. Fast forward to present day, does Traeger have a gauge on where you're currently sitting in the market with that? And I guess more importantly, when... A new product is launched, whether you're the size of Traeger or whether you're just, you know, kind of a, a mom and pop Joe little person. There's benchmarks that put in place to kind of gauge that success. So what have you seen from both sides? So we've been really happy with the launch of the Timberline. Um, you know, when we look at it as far as a insulated pellet cooker, I don't think there's one that's had more sales in the last 12 months than we have. Um, it's been it's been super successful. And we're getting a lot of positive customer feedback. Um, but but when it comes to launching a grill like that, you've got a lot of risk at stake. Yeah. You know, you 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 bait you alpha test, you beta test, you 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 do everything in engineering that you can, but you never know what happens when you're hitting that wide scale production. 
And we've been fortunate with the Timberline that everything's worked out really well. And we've got a lot of happy customers. And, and now we've got another three to four products coming down the pike here the next 12 months. And we're pretty excited about them. For the folks that aren't familiar with the Timberline, or maybe they've heard it from a cursory standpoint, can you give me a thumbnail sketch of how that kind of separates itself? Absolutely. So you've got you've got two products, the Timberline 850, the Timberline 1300. Um, they're both double wall insulated, so your pellet consumption is super low. Um, they're also 24-pound hoppers, so you can sleep overnight, no problem at all. Um, it's also controlled by our Wi-Fi technology, which has an onboard app that you can run from your tablet or your phone. And you actually don't have to. So if you want to say, hey, put this brisket on for the first three hours, I want to cook at 200 super smoke. And then after that three hours, I want to go to 275. You don't have to get up to do that three hours later. You can set that as a cook program and let it roll. Also has a keep warm function. Uh, it has an alarm function. So if you have your probe in the meat and you have an alarm set, regardless of where you are in the world, as long as you're connected to your grill, <laughs> it'll let you know when it pops. Um, so it, it, it's just, and it's a true cloud-based solution. This isn't point to point. It's we made a significant investment in being cloud-based, and literally all the time I'll be traveling and forget that I have the app up and I've got all four demo grills at my store on Wi-Fi and I'll see, oh, your grill just cranked up and they're like, I'm like, wow, okay. Well, so I'll text one of my guys at the store, so what are you guys cooking today? But it, it, it's interesting in that fact. From a production standpoint, have there been any challenges with keeping up on orders? Or are you guys pretty ramped up at this point? No, I would say the first three to four months in, it was definitely a, uh, it was definitely trying to keep up. But now at this point, we've ramped up production. You should, all your Timberline retailers should have Traegers, or all your Timberline retailers should have 850s and 1300s. And online, we also have 850s and 1300s. So um, I would definitely recommend going into your dealer, checking it out, feeling it getting the fit and feel comparing it to your other Traeger or, or the other grill you've cooked on. Um, it's, it's definitely well worth it, but yeah, we are in stock and uh, ready to sell. So you'd mentioned uh, other Traeger. There is kind of a, another product line, I guess that you have available. For instance, I have an ACE hardware right up the street from me. I don't see a Timberline in there, yep. but I believe I see like a pro series. Yeah. The pro series 22, the pro series 34. I'll tell you what I call those the workhorses of the brand. We have, I'll tell you what, I have cooked thousands of pounds on my Pro Series grills. And and while they're not Wi-Fi connected, they have the built-in temp probes, so you can look at a pro, two probes on your controller, know where they're at. Um, they're, they're great cookers, man. But for somebody looking to get into the pellet game, $799, $999, great price points, great cookers. Chad Ward joining me here on the show. TraegerGrills.com is the website. There's a promotion going on right now that I would recently saw I want to ask you about since I knew I was going to have you on called Traeger Meat Madness. What's that all about? Yeah, so Meat Madness in the past, we've made people like do recipe submissions on the uh, on the website. Come to find out, Craig, there, there's these – do you know there's these websites out there for like a half a penny you can make people go vote for things? What? Uh-oh. Yes. I'd never, I'd never heard of that. I bet you have, but you're just playing coy right now. But, if but I, there, 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 there are. If I had heard of that, one of us would be in the Barbecue Hall of Fame already. <laughs> Alas, here we are, neither of us in the Barbecue Hall of Fame. But so literally, we, we would try to put on this meat madness to go with March Madness that had all this epic food in a bracket and, and, and do it that way. Well... You know, when, when people try to find the cheats out of it, we kind of looked at it and said, okay, what are we going to do here? So we moved it to an Instagram type situation. So all you got to do is you've got to take and, and pick your best food entry. And while we would prefer it to be a trigger entry, it doesn't have to be. Take your best looking food picture, hashtag trigger, hashtag meat madness, and get yourself in this bracket that's going to break out over the next two and a half, three weeks. And dude, we've got some great some really great prizes. One of the prizes for the, for the top 
the top winner is going to be a personal barbecue class in their backyard from one of the Traeger pros. So really? me, me or Matt Pittman or Diva Q. I mean, that, that's not, that's not a bad gig and, and they're going to get a new Timberline. It, it, it's, wow. it's, it's legit. So I would tell people that are interested, go over to TraegerGirls.com, click on meat madness or go to our Instagram. You can see what all is going on there. But Meat Madness, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. Hey, it costs you nothing to enter, and all you gotta do is put up some awesome food picks. One of the other things that is happening here over the next couple of weeks is the National Barbecue and Grilling Association's convention. I've been talking about that for the next couple of weeks. Obviously, I'm going to be doing live shows from there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which would be, I believe, the 15th, 16th, and 17th of March from noon to three. And I know Traeger is going to be a part of that. What are you guys uh, partnered up with on the MBBQA side? So um, Thursday, we're going to be doing the uh, attendees dinner. So we've got a really nice dinner planned for all the attendees, about 400 folks. And then on Saturday out there at the kind of grilling and demo days, we're going to give a taste of our shop class. So anybody in the Dallas area can come out and uh, check out what does a, a day in the life of the shop class look like over a 30 to 45 minute demo and, um, and kind of get to see that. Then we'll be handing out samples all day Saturday. And, um, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to being a part of it, man. We're we're big MBBQA folks and uh, believe in what they're doing and, and kind of the drive to grow barbecue in all, in all channels. So if you're on the fence about attending this, maybe you're going to be in DFW for whatever reason and you've heard about it and you're kind of waffling a little bit, or maybe you live down there and this might be something that's on your radar like what? What do you think the win is for just the average live fire cooking fan to go and pony up to either check out a day or that weekend? I'll tell you what. That Saturday you should come out. I, I know what we're planning on feeding for samples. Uh, so you're gonna get to eat, eat some great food. You get to meet Greg Rempe. Holy smokes! What? I mean, Me? That on Saturday <laughs> is worth the price of admission. But no, you're gonna have a lot of you're you're gonna have you know Traeger out there. Um, myself, Danielle, we're, we're going to be serving samples. Um, you've got other grill brands out there. You're going to get that, get all of your barbecue and grilling questions answered right there at the stockyards. Come on out. I, I think it's, it's well worth the, the price of admission and, uh, it'll be a great time. I remember Andy husband's telling me, uh, either a year or two ago that even for him, so he's kind of a, a widely recognized guy, very accomplished author, very successful chef and then barbecue guy of course uh, along with uh, iq and chris hart and he's like man i'm just kind of gawking at everybody on a saturday because it's a who's who of everybody in the barbecue and grilling industry so for that point alone it's worth a draw no i mean you've got myron mike mills i mean you, you've got all the chris players you're all there yeah yeah for sure chris yeah um uh, uh billy durney's been there years past from hometown barbecue up in new york i mean it's um, Malcolm Reed, Heath Riles. I mean, you've got you've got a lot of substantial dudes that are going to be there, you know, doing their thing. And, you know, absolutely. Last January, when we had you on, we did the barbecue trends of 2017. I gotta I gotta admit, I pulled up our last docket, and we were pretty <laughs> right on with a lot of stuff. If I'm going to be honest, yes. What about 2018? What are you seeing from a trends standpoint that maybe it's kind of popular right now that might gain or something that we don't even see on the radar right now that's going to emerge and be a hot ticket? Well, you know, something I'm thinking about doing is I'm thinking about doing a foie gras wrapped burnt end. I don't believe that. I don't. I don't believe it. Well, 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 the people in California can't eat it because foie gras is illegal in California. That's exactly why I'm doing it. (laughs) We're going to show those West yeah. Coasters for once and for all. <laughs> but but no, it, it's it's interesting, man. I I, th- I think it's funny when we were talking about. It, I was like, man, we we kind of we kind of hit on a couple of big ones. Oh yeah. The one thing I'd, I'd like to see go away and and is is there's things that can be burn ins besides beef. I, I'd like everybody to open up the the burn end vocabulary. Vernacular. Okay, yeah. I, yes, I like vernacular. Yeah. I would like to see that, and I think you know, Maddie Pittman's done some things. Some other people have done some things that it's all right, man. If it's burnt, and it's got a little char to it, and it's got a little texture. It's okay to call it a burn end. I'd like to see that trend a little bit. 
And I know it upset some folks, but that's okay with me. Um, otherwise, I I don't know, but I do like the. You will see a foie gras wrapped burn in. Maybe I'll see it. Over. Maybe I'll see it in a couple weeks. You never know. I think that I, pellet pizza cooking is going to continue to grow in popularity. Uh, somebody that we know, obviously another one of my sponsors, Green Mountain Grill, I thought hit a huge deal with their pizza oven. It was like a really cheap price point. It provided a great solution versus importing something for $30,000 from Italy. But And then there was all sorts of other accessories coming out. I think that's still kind of an emerging mark. I would completely concur. I, I think it is. And not only just the cost, but not having to take up any more footprint. Mm-hmm. In the backyard. You know what I mean? To, to me, that that's two things. But yes, I think you'll still see that that grow. And, and once again, to me, that's, that's elevating folks' backyard, which I think is amazing. What about your thought on the emergence and popularity of pellet-fueled fireplaces or heaters in place of the propane versions? I, I think it a lot... It, it's funny we were talking about this the other day because it, it totally doesn't fall in our business plan. But we were looking at it and, and people are going, well, man, now that pellet cooking is so much different than it was 10, 15 years ago, yeah, yeah. there's so many more pellets in other places, you know? So it makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I think we'll see it grow. I, I mean, I really do. I mean, the only thing that you're – the, the difference there is there's a little more cost. You got to have an auger and a motor, um, whereas you you just have to have a converter and a coupler with propane. Right. But at the same time, if you're your house that pellet cooks, why wouldn't you want to take and just pour some pellets into your heater that you're pouring into your cooker? You know. Um, so I I think it's got legs. Can we agree that 2018 will be the death nail of the barbecue box? You know what I'm talking yes. about? The subscription yes. service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. that I think I think we're that's gonna be done by summer. There's way too many, you know, great websites out there that why, why do you need a box? <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think every website out there says, here's our, our top performers. You know, whether it be, you know, Big Papa's, you know, um, Barbecue Superstore, Whiskey Bent Barbecue Supply, whoever. There's a ton of them. Mm -hmm. You can go out and it says best performers, and you click down and you see, oh, this is probably something I want to taste and, and try. Yes, I don't know that we need a box to tell us. Uh, Chad, before I let you go tonight, um, I do want to talk a little bit about the fact that Traeger has found it somewhere in its heart to partner with this here internet-based show yeah. And, uh, you know, from a, uh, from a support standpoint, I certainly appreciate it. It's great to be aligned with uh, the biggest name within that portion of the industry. So I certainly appreciate that. But uh, I guess what's, what's the win that you guys see from a, from a Traeger standpoint in partnering with the show? Well, you know, Greg, um, you know, personally, I mean, you know, I've admired you from day one, man. You're a great friend of mine. And what you did, I mean, you're, you're the pioneer in, in barbecue radio. And while I love to do it on a part-time basis before you, but um, always that way. And that's something we talked about, you know, when I wanted to get into this and you know, people can go back and listen to it years ago, but I would have never got into having my radio show if it wasn't for you and uh, listen to it and just wanted to have a little different format. But if you wouldn't have been good with it, I'd have never done it. But then when, when I look at it as a brand, you know, taking my personal hat off and coming over as the director of barbecue marketing for Traeger. Yep. Um, no, nobody has more reach weekly than you have. And so for, for us, it, it just made sense. We wanted people to hear our message through your voice, which is super authentic. And, um, and I don't think you would have took us on if you didn't believe in it. So, um, it, it's just, I think it's, it's a great partnership and I look forward to growing it further, my friend. Yeah, me too. No doubt about it. In two weeks' time, uh, both Chad and I will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth area for NBBQA. So, again, uh, if you're on the fence, I mean, what two better great-looking faces uh, for movie acclaim? And then, of course, our winning personalities, probably ahead of our good looks. But nevertheless, we'll take what we can get. It's Chad Ward from Traeger Grills. Again, the website, TraegerGrills.com. 
Chad, I always appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much. Before to spending time within a couple weeks. Take care, Greg. All right, there he is. Chad War from Traeger Grills. All guests appear via Even the Chad Traeger does. Grills hotline. Mm-mm-mm. That's right. Yummy. Chad Ward appears. Chad from Traeger Grills appears via the Traeger Grills hotline. No doubt about it. All right, that was great. Uh, TraegerGrills.com, the website if you want to check it out. Timberline and the Pro Series. Chad also mentioned Big Papa Smokers, so let me talk to you about them right quick. Big Papa's, the one-stop online shop for all things barbecue. The curated selection of the best barbecue cooking and grilling supplies will get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything at Big Papa Smokers has been Pitmaster approved by Sterling Big Papa Ball himself. From award-winning rubs and sauces to American-made grills and smokers, Big Papa Smokers has everything you need to be a better outdoor cook. Whether you're in the backyard like me or on the competition circuit, Big Papa's has something for you. Looking to improve your flavor for your competition barbecue recipes, Big Papa Smokers has combined forces with fellow rub company and most recent guinea pig winner, Simply Marvelous Barbecue, to form the West Coast offense. Big Papa Smokers, also the proud owner of the award-winning Granny's Barbecue Sauce. If you're looking for a new go-to barbecue sauce that will please everyone, Granny's traditional yet powerful flavor reminds us why we fell in love with barbecue in the first place. Find Granny's Barbecue Sauce and other top-rated barbecue sauces at BigPapaSmokers.com. And aside from their premium selection of rubs and sauces, Big Papa's also offers a variety of pellet, charcoal, and wood cookers. Now, if you are looking for a versatile, easy-to-use cooker, check out the Mac 2-Star General Pellet Cooker. Big Papa Smokers is the exclusive Mac dealer and even offers special packages. Not a fan of pellet smokers? That's fine. Take a look at the old Hickory Ace BP. It's the only charcoal cooker that Big Papa trusts on his competition trailer. If you're a backyard barbecue enthusiast looking for a durable, versatile grill that will last forever, the M Grill is just what you need. They're built like tanks. Not sure what grill you need? You can't go wrong with any of them featured on BigPapaSmokers.com. They have something for every kind of backyard cook. It's clear that Big Papa's is the place to go for all things barbecue. Every product featured on their website, hand-selected to help you barbecue better. Boost your barbecue skills with the help of Big Papa Smokers, the number one online barbecue store. You can call them toll-free at 877-828-0727 or shop their website at BigPapaSmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A Smokers.com. Fast Eddie coming up out of the break. Stick around. Be right back. Ready to get on the air? Call 216-220-0966. Now, let's get back to the LeBron James of Barbecue Talk. Craig Rampey. All right, this portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. You visit Cookin, C-O-O-K-I-N, CookinPellets.com for more information or purchase. If you'd rather purchase from Amazon.com, you can do that as well. So, Amazon.com or CookinPellets.com. Download the free app, too. Get notified on great cooking deals and free shipping deals when they happen. My next guest, one of the pellet cooker pioneers creating the very popular FEC line of cookers. You might not know about him, this little fact. He's also an avid desert car racer. What? Pellets, fire, horsepower, all makes sense to me. He's been appearing on this show when it was only in podcast form, if you can believe it or not, dating all the way back to 2007. Let's go ahead and race to the hotline and welcome back friend of the show, Fast Eddie Morin. Eddie, how are you, buddy? Hey, buddy. I'm doing well. I'm I'm feeling a little bit uh, like I got too much hair to be as good looking as you and Chad. I got to do something about it, you know. Oh, the, it's the too much hair blast. Okay, I see. I see. I, I get it. I get it. But you can't beat our movie star good looks. So, you know. No, no. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling out of, out of touch here. That's definitely. all right. Um, all right. So, Ed, you're still into this racing thing. What What gives? Uh, oh man, you know, I'm getting old fast and it's, it's not, it's, it's not an old man sport. So I gotta, I gotta go pound on the old bones and as uh, much as I can while I can still do it. But, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, uh, living the dream now. You know, I did this as a kid and, uh, get to go back to it 
and I got to race the Baja 1000 back in November in a trophy truck in this big super kill class and we ran in a well, actually legends it was i was the oldest guy on the team you had to be 50 or over to be on a driver wow. and uh, we run second down there in that deal uh but i was in the truck 17 hours that day to do my 400 miles we had some issues just getting it to the finish was a struggle so is fast eddie in his height of barbecue as passionate about that as he is about desert racing or are they mutually exclusive um i would say i'm as i'm i'm almost as passionate about that because you know you 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 play to win and um my car i won the last three races in my car and i'm going out to the mint 400 to defend my title next week um with my very famous larry raglan car i restored so um you know it's um, I'm I'm feeling the age though. Um, it's um it's it's uh, it's not that many, much time left, and I'm gonna have to start cooking pizza. I'm gonna get that start start working that pizza oven more and quit messing with this desert racing so much. Fast Eddie joining me here on the show. Uh, Ed, you know you've been a long time pellet believer, pellet promoter, maker of pellet cookers, and it wasn't that long ago that there really weren't nearly as many manufacturers as they are now. Being one of those pioneers in this portion of the industry, how are you viewing the segment as we sit current day, and what do you think, from a growth perspective, you see moving forward? Well, there's no doubt this is this is the fastest growing segment of barbecue. Hmm. I mean, it's it's taken market share from gas, it's taken market share from um, charcoal. Uh, people are finding out the convenience of it. Uh, Traeger, of course, with their you know, the money and everything they've got behind them and all is just killing it out there. Uh, and it's dragging us, the rest of us along with it, you know. Um, uh, but I, it's a, it's amazing. I'm, I was just thinking about, you know, when I first just talked to Chad about pellet fired stuff, you know, and he was the typical guy, you know, <laughs> I don't know, you know, is that a fad kind of thing? And now look at him today, you know, it's, <laughs> but I remember, I remember talking to him, you know, and just like a, all kinds of folks back in the day and, and you get looked at like this stupid, crazy thing. And, um, then, then there's all kinds of uh, stories like that. People don't realize what it, you know, they come along 25 years later. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it was, uh, and now people are finding out what, you know, what it's really all about. So aside from convenience, what do you think some of the, the biggest wins for somebody that's kind of teetering on the edge of going, pellets versus something else um man uh, you know f- flavor and convenience is it, there it's both there um and, and another thing too it, you know families buy grills the wives don't want to mess with this stuff they want to go out and turn it on turn it off turn it on turn it off and uh you can pretty much do that with most good pellet grills i mean there's still some out there that um, I think it takes a little more maintenance than others. Uh, we like to pride ourselves in that ours is pretty maintenance free compared to a lot of them. Uh, the fuel is going to be is you know I'm, I'm, what I'm really concerned about in the pellet grill industry is probably all the different brands of fuel coming on board, mm-hmm. and um, some of it's uh, not very well made and got a lot of ash content to it. Um, we, we see it more than probably anybody else because all our customers run such a long time frame and, um, it does affect how the machines work when you start running, you know, 20 plus hours. So how, from a consumer's standpoint, Ed, how do you tell right away that maybe you don't have a good batch of pellets? Um, your temperatures don't run like uh, normal. Uh, you're going to start noticing that um, maybe you're going to start seeing more smoke out of your unit uh, than before. Uh, you, you, your fire pots are getting fuller, you know, of the ash in them. They don't want to light up uh, very well. Uh, you may be burning out starting rods more often. You know, that's that's another telltale sign that, well, I used to didn't. My hot rods were fine, but now I'm having issues with them. And, and clinkers, you'll know it when you go to clean out your fire pot that it's a crust uh, 
in the pot and and clinkers happen when you have something that has a lot of lot more bark content to it and uh it's not as dry of wood too uh and dirty also i mean like we chad was talking about this heater thing i've got a a uh boiler here in my shop that's a pellet fired or wood fired boiler but i pretty much run it on on pellets Mm. and uh boy i will tell you what i i i thought equipment was a little bit finicky on barbecue about quality of pellets and i go to mm-hmm. the local store i don't we don't even have our manufacturer make pellets i can buy them at the low you know lowe's or menards here in kansas city a lot cheaper than i can have them done and brought in and uh it just i can't tell you when i come out here in my shop and my boiler's not running <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all clogged up and is burning up not where it's not supposed to be burning and and uh what an aggravation you know it's still solid fuel and messing with solid fuels is going to have to always be tinkering a little bit different than uh anything that has to, that's gas that burns gas and i really don't see uh you know the the pellet stove world is really taking a dive uh, I mean, it is off the market. That market is off so bad because mm. oil prices are down. Yeah. Um, and uh, here again, you know, convenience. If, if they don't have to go pick up them 40-pound bags and dump them in there and clean the ash and do stuff like, you know, we're a convenient world. And, um, you know, they'll mess with it a little bit on barbecue out there in their backyard and get their hands dirty some. But um, people want to just turn stuff on, turn it off. I think that's the biggest deal. Um, that Ron Popeil, you know, that's I always like to, I always loved Ron Popeil, you know, and, and that's like on our, our pizza oven that uh, you put it in, you shut it, you take it out. There's no spinning it, messing with it. It, it cooks even the whole way. And I always like that. When we try to test and do stuff for our cookers, we always try to be like the Ron Popeil method. You know, I remember, it's funny you talk about the pizza oven. Uh, Chad and I were just talking about that last segment. I remember when Stuart came on the show and kind of made that announcement that, hey, we're going to be making this industrial pellet-fired pizza oven, and it was something that Cookshack was very excited to start getting out there. Um, what can you tell me as far as the success that unit has seen? I've seen some videos with you on it. It looks absolutely tremendous. Well, it's taken, you know, it's a new product takes time. You know, we've got a few of them here and there. Uh, we have showed some big restaurant groups that are thinking about adding a pizza to their menu. Uh, that's what that tabletop oven was designed for. Um, the food truck industry, I look for it to get real big with that, uh, because they can, uh, put them on their food trucks, uh, extremely easy. Uh, that oven's running about a three minute pie with the, the, the dough that we like to run, uh, it less than three minutes, actually two, about two minutes and 45 seconds. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, you're talking about, you can run 20 pies an hour per oven. That's pretty good. So, um, but it's, it's coming along. We've got, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff looking, you know, and I'm talking some big numbers that thing's going to do really, really well. Ed Moran joining me here on the show. Uh, we're talking about pellet stuff and let's switch gears just for a second. I mean, certainly pellet driven. We'll talk about competition barbecue right now. You know, I remember when we were doing round tables and other podcast interviews, you know, there was a point when you had said, geez, you know, I just started injecting my pork butts. You had never done that before. Or you weren't really down with that. And now, of course, a lot of stuff has evolved over the last 10, 11 years to where it's commonplace to do all this stuff now. Or you would never think about not doing it now because you want to give yourself the best chance to win. How are you viewing competition barbecue as it sits right now? And, and what do you think some of the biggest trends have been over the last couple of years? I'd say the biggest trend over the last couple of years is the downturn of the local team. You know, the, the, uh, it used to be competition barbecue was like the revival that came to your town. And then a lot of your friends and neighbors came down and cooked. And I think you're starting to see even like the Ponca city contest is having a hard time with, uh, the locals coming out. And, uh, because it's such an expensive sport now, you know, you got to buy such high-end meat. You got to buy all these products. You have to do so much to it. The work ethic that you have to have into it. Um, it's not as much of uh, uh, friends and family, and um, you know, kind of thing that 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 it was. Uh, so I think we kind of have. I mean, you 
you know, we all kept talking about we want to be like NASCAR. Well, we are being like NASCAR in my <laughs> my book. And you're starting to see empty seats in the grandstands, you know. <laughs> Um, and you know, you're not getting the locals coming anymore. Um, you know, people are finding out I'm better off sitting around messing with my phone <laughs> than, than going out there and load my truck full of all my cooking stuff and then go have a, uh, go to a cook off. Uh, I just think it's, it's, it's very sad to see, uh, the rise to it. I mean, there's more and more cook offs around, but the, they're smaller, and they're not like what they used to be, and I think you're losing. It's it's driving down. You're not seeing young. You're not seeing any young folk because they can't afford it. You know, um, I was looking at the board members the other day, and and I was a little bit disappointed. The only woman that was on that whole picture right there was Carolyn. Mm -hmm. I remember back in the day we'd have two or three gals that were on the board. You know, and. Um, and it, it's the diversity of it, it you know, where it, it's, um, yeah, I, it's just, it's so much different. Do you think that there's a time where that revival type feeling is going to be coming back or has it evolved so much that where we're at now is kind of the standard and it's not going to devolve back into what you were talking about? I don't know how you're going to be able to do that. Uh, personally, uh, the steak deal that's coming along, you know, you can go and set up and, and bring some friends along and you can cook it for a pretty cheap, uh, cheap, uh, cost. I look for it to kind of fall in the category like the chili cook offs do, mm -hmm. you know, very, very similar to that, but that, uh, overnight party revival, um, you know, family and friends sitting around, you know, on Friday nights and having their Saturdays, you know, at, at cooking. I think that's, um, because, you know, the big guys come in, you don't see them till five o'clock in the morning, they fire up and they're going to cook hot and fast and that's it, you know, and they're blowing in, blowing out. They don't, they don't want to do that. Um, and so you don't get to, the locals don't get to go around and meet them. Mm -hmm. They don't get to go around and talk with them. They don't get to go around and associate, you know? Um, and it's, um, uh, it, you know, it's a little bit disturbing and I, I, I don't, you know, there's several things that happen to it that's done that. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know how, how you would turn that, that ball around really. I mean, I, I, I without, I just don't – we'd have to really sit down and, and uh, put a bunch of heads together. Ed Fast Eddie Morin is my guest right here. You can find his cookers at cookshack.com, by the way. The uh, FEC line certainly there. And, uh, of course, uh, Ed always available on social media and so forth. Uh, I'd always appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much for doing it. All right. Yeah, hey, loved being on once in a while. Great. Good you luck guys are on really looking sharp, man. You're looking good. Yeah, good luck on that race, Ed. Be safe. I appreciate it. All right. It. Look out. All guests He's got to be safe in that Traeger race. Come on, Eddie. Hotline. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not sure, but Ed might be making fun of my lack of hair. That's all right. At least I'm not holding on to something that I know is retreating at will, by the way. That's barbecue legend Ed Morin. I'm going to talk to you quickly about the Barbecue Guru, the longest running sponsor of this show. The Barbecue Guru has always believed that outdoor cooking should be easy because it can be, especially with the Monolith Barbecue Guru Edition Grill. The Monolith is the world's first temperature controlled smoker with a built in power draft fan. That's right, it actually comes with the cooker. This means smarter control, greater freedom with automatic pit temperature controls. Easy to choose your cooking time and temperature and let the monolith do all the hard work. Consider it your sous chef for barbecue pit master. With minimal effort, you now have oven-like precision at the grill and can serve the tastiest, juiciest meals each and every time. You head on over to bbqguru.com. That's bbqguru.com. And check out the website, see what they have. And again, if you're going to order the monolith, the fan is already built into the cooker, so all you need is a controller. Now, here's the win. If you already have a Barbecue Guru temperature controller and you buy the monolith, you don't have to buy an additional controller to get this thing to work. All you have to do is hook up the controller 
And now you're off and running. Because remember, the fan is built in to the monolith. Also, you're not going to get jammed up by only getting the grill. And then you had to buy the nest. And then you get to buy the deflector plate and the side shells and the ash tool and the great hook and all that other stuff. The monolith comes with an inordinate amount of accessories at no additional cost. So it's like a complete turnkey operation when it comes to the ceramics. Plus, the fan is already built in. And if you have an existing Guru controller, you just hook it up and you are off and running. It doesn't get any better than that. Again, the website, bbqguru.com. If you have any questions, call them 800-288-GURU. That's 800-288-GURU. The Barbecue Guru continues to be a breakthrough in barbecue technology. All right, that was Fast Eddie Morin. We will come back to wrap the first hour. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. Be right back. interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, thanks again to Ed Morin for joining me last segment. That's Fast Eddie. You know, I was just searching through iTunes earlier. And I do not believe, so this is like the, this show, the Barbecue Central Show, is the second iteration of the Barbecue Central Show. Originally, it was called the Barbecue for You podcast, BBQ, the numeral four, the letter U. That was also the corresponding web address when I had my barbecue forum up and running. And by the way, before I sold it, it was like one of the most prolific barbecue and grilling forums that was out there on the interwebs. And then with the emergence of all these other barbecue forums, I was like, well, I got to separate. So I started podcasting. That's actually where I met Ed for the first time doing a podcast. And then I just got more interested in podcasts because I thought, you know, forums are going to become a little more obsolete. There's still a couple Cook Shack still got a pretty active barbecue forum. Barbecue Brethren is still a pretty active barbecue forum. The one I sold is in the tank right now. No doubt. Amazingribs.com has a pretty active barbecue forum as well. It's got like 17,000 members. But I was trolling through iTunes earlier today to try and track back dates because I believe the brisket round table which is the eh, that might have been the second time I had had it. I might have done like a, a full on interview with Eddie first just one on one and then we did a barbecue round table and it was Eddie, Ray Lampy, Jim Minion and Leanne Whippet. and if you are not steeped in the tradition and history of barbecue mania those four names are iconic in the industry like Jim Minion, that's the. You ever heard of the Minion method to light your cookers? When you put a small amount of lit charcoal over the top of unlit charcoal, that's called the Minion method after Jim Minion. That guy's a legend. That guy was smoking caribou to pork and wagyu briskets a decade before anybody else was even into that stuff. You go back and listen to the brisket roundtable that I did, if you can even find it anymore. And aside from Jim, Eddie, Ray, and Leanne all poo-pooed Wagyu beef and caribou to pork. Now it's commonplace. All right, we are pointing to the second hour. Stick around. We'll be right back.
Hey, this is Helen Paradise from SoCal, and you are listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How's it going? We have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate two feet before we nursed. Delicious, Laverdius. Shit, peace. I'm shaking like a dog. Shit, peach to eat. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. Here we go. Hey, if you missed the first hour, shame on you. And where have you been? We talked with barbecue legend Ed Morin. We also talked with budding barbecue legend Chad Ward, the director of marketing for the barbecue division for Traeger Grills and the pit master for Whiskey Bent Competition Cooking Team. But... The good news is you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google, uh, Reddit nerds, I believe, have an RSS feed up there somewhere, probably hacking into the server as we speak. Any podcast catcher that you use with third-party software, just put in the podcast feed and away you go. And that way you never have to worry about missing a show or a segment, or if you're not missing anything, all you have to do is uh, go back to that podcast and you can re-listen at will. Hit the website, bbqcentralshow.com slash subscribe. It gives you all the options to subscribe and away you go. Still to come on this show tonight, the Embedded Correspondence segment. Doug Shiding from Texas, David Huss from Oklahoma, and Steve Ray from 10IC will be joining me to go over their hot takes for the month. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com is the email address. So this past weekend drew a close to the 2018 Winter Olympics. Are you into the Winter Olympics? I'm not so much. My wife is a huge Olympics fan. So I watch by proxy. And it doesn't matter for her whether it's Summer Olympics or Winter Olympics, I think if given the choice, she's more of a Summer Olympics fan, but it doesn't make her any less of a fan of the Winter Olympics, and she loves the whole thing. The uh, the coverage of it, the sports, the finishes, upsets, underdogs, favorites pulling through, all that stuff. But did you see the fact that there was a Russian athlete that left or was booted out because he was doping. So from a very high level, that pretty much happens every Olympics, whether it's summer or winter. Somebody gets caught doping. Somebody gets caught juicing. They're trying to get an edge or get over or get their country an extra medal, whatever it is. So they dope and they juice. And inevitably, they randomly get picked. They got to pee. They test, they're positive, and they're out. And I can see that when you're doing the 50,000-mile cross-country ski. I can see it if you're doing some of those long and or short track ice skating things because it's very taxing on you physically. Maybe the bobsled stuff because those guys are huge and fast. They're like all linebackers from the NFL. So you're trying to get that extra 10th so you juice up. I don't like to cheat, but if you're not going to get caught or if there's a better chance you're not going to get caught, what's the old saying? If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Or it's only cheating if you get caught. The list goes on with excuses. Well, this person got caught except for the fact that he was in the sport of what? Curling. Curling? 
the Russian athlete who won a bronze medal in curling at the Winter Olympics traveled to South Korean capital Seoul to await the results of a second drug test, which, by the way, came back positive for juicing. He failed his preliminary doping test, and that put his medal in jeopardy and was later tested positive on that second test, and his medal was stripped. My man, it's curling. What are you doing to get an advantage? What do you need an advantage on? Do you need to slide quicker than the guys from Sweden or Norway? Do you need to brush faster than that Canadian team or us from the USA? By the way, I don't know if you noticed or not. The American curling team won gold. (laughs) Yeah, I think I'm just alerting you to the fact that the curling team from America won gold just now after it happened. Uh, Soccer laughs (laughs) at that. And nobody likes soccer. I don't think there's going to be a bump in curling popularity because America took gold in it over the Winter Olympics. Call me crazy. And then, of course, there's this from Thrillist.com. KFC, which, by the way, is Kentucky Fried Chicken. Want you to drink gravy cocktails because there's never enough calories. They want you to drink gravy cocktails. What? I'm not kidding either. Just short of filling IV tubes with purified lard, KFC is encouraging people to imbibe cocktails with an unlikely primary ingredient. That, of course, being gravy. The global fried chicken chain is known for marketing gimmicks that, if real, would likely make its stock crater. The fried chicken bath bomb, for example. Can you smell a drumstick? But not now. KFC is promoting its foremost chicken sauce by unleashing several gravy cocktail recipes. Seizing on the stocktail trend which has been sweeping cocktail lounges with various meat-infused libations, the fried chicken chain hopes you will pour its gravy into a cocktail glass, put it to your lips, and drink the hypercaloric content. (laughs) Of course, this all depends, however, on how much you love submerging things in KFC gravy. The company's leaders think its gravy is popular enough for people to drink from a glass. What? In a quote, our fans repeatedly express their love for our gravy, which always sparks ideas within our creative team. Marion Racine, marketing manager for UF, I'm sorry, for KFC and Umbrands in Ireland, told The Independent, We know our gravy is good enough to drink alone. So with stocktails being a real hit at the moment, What a better ingredient to use to take it to the next level than gravy. KFC has also released several videos showing how to make the drinks. The first of which is the Gravy Mary, which is shown in a detailed video. Then the Finger Licking Sour combines Mezcal, which I believe is some kind of a uh, tequila, I think, or is that a rum? Whatever it is, it combines mezcal and, yes, gravy, which is probably a first in the history of cocktails. Since these aren't being sold at any actual KFC outposts, because I believe it's they don't have a liquor license anywhere in the states that I'm aware of. They don't sell beer at KFC. Like You can go to Chipotle and get a beer or a margarita in a can or something like that. But I don't believe you have that option at KFCs. And it's been a while now since I have gone to the KFC. Like a really long time. 
But KFC is counting on the fact that you will buy their gravy. You will take a shake, a mixer, whatever, with hot gravy, a plethora of other fancy ingredients. Who knows if you wind up hosting a soiree with all manner of KFC brandings, the company might even commission you for an oil portrait. But that's probably just wishful thinking, I guess. So the question is this. If you went to KFC and ordered a large side of gravy to go, sir, would you like chicken with that? Would I like chicken with that? Hell no. I'm about to use this gravy for my cocktails, lady. Now, make that a double side of gravy to go, ASAFP. Because I have Mezcal, Triple Sec, and a dash of club soda to go with my fat cocktail. Thank you. Gravy cocktails? Like barbecue people and waistlines aren't a nightly topic of conversation. Okay. Let's eat all the brisket and then wash it down with a gravy-flavored drink. Sounds delish. All right, the Embedded Texas Correspondence segment's coming up. Let me talk to you quickly about Green Mountain Grills, makers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. Three different sizes to choose from, as I tell you about each and every week. You have the Davy Crockett. That is your most portable solution. If you're really into doing that whole tailgate thing, maybe you're into camping, you take your car and you have a 12 volt outlet all you have to do is plug that davy crockett into the 12 volt and away you go now if you're going to be more of a home guy like me i don't have any idea why anybody would camp that's totally beyond me i want to be in my house and sleep in my bed go out on my patio and use my jim buoy which is the big one or the daniel boone which is medium sized now both of those cookers have the ability for you to rip the guts out of those and then plop in that high heat pizza oven insert it's less than 150 bucks, and now transforms your Jim Bowie or Daniel Boone Green Mountain Grill pellet cooker into a high-heat pizza oven. Imagine the parties that you can have by simply setting either one of these cookers to like 320 degrees. That makes it about 640 degrees cheaper at the stone. Now, if you want to cook higher than that, here's rule of thumb. Set the pit temperature on the grill once it gets to... 350 or 400 or 450 or whatever, double that number. That's probably where you're at or so right at the stone. Now you can double check that with one of those laser temperature gauges, but I found that for me, 320 works just about right. If you want to try and cook a pizza in a minute, jack that thing up to 500 degrees. Keep the lid shut. Once it reaches there, you're probably right around 1,000 degrees on the stone. You can get it where your dealers are selling Green Mountain Grills. I'm not sure if there's any online providers there. I'll have to check with Jason Baker and get back to you on that. But there you go. You got Jim Bowie can accommodate a lot of meat now. Daniel Boone, kind of like that 3-4 family situation. And then Davy Crockett, you can have both of those and then take Davy Crockett wherever you want to go. Again, if you're into camping or you just want to go to the park for the day, stick it into that 12 volt outlet and away you go. They can also supply pellets for those cookers. You get it all right there at GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. We are back with the Embedded Correspondence. Stick around. We'll be right back. Show giving you a monthly visit from a doctor of barbecue, a man actually named Meathead, the author of a barbecue Bible, bloggers, reviewers, competitors, and manufacturers by the dozens. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Smithfield. Championship Pitmasters winning with Smithfield. You can, too, commit to cooking with Smithfield for the 2018 barbecue season, and you'll receive smoke and swag just participating. 
Few requirements. Sign up to pay a small shipping fee, 25 bucks, and be a member of one of the Barbecue Sports major sanctioning bodies. Be sure to come back and check your first place prizes and pork and ribs to win great prizes through the Walking with Smithfield Incentive Program. Once a Smithfield committed cook, show us your Smithfield with the hashtag show us your Smithfield on Facebook and on the Instagrams. Committed cooks are limited to the first 500 for sign up. So make sure that you head on over there and take part in all of that fun and frivolity. Smoking with Smithfield.com. That's smoking with Smithfield.com. John Dawson weighing in via the email. Subject line juice ramps. I'm pretty sure that juicing and curling means drinking a beer be- between throws. And not throws. I think you mean stones. <laughs> stones throw. Maybe that's where that whole saying comes from. A stone's throw. You never know. All right, let's go ahead and get this party started. We race to the Traeger Grills hotline and unveil the embedded correspondence segment. Steve Ray, Doug Scheiding, David Huff joining me here on the show. Uh, Gentlemen, as always, appreciate you taking time. Let's quickly go around this table of ours and with a quick yes or no. uh, Doug, if I made up off the top of my head a gravy-infused cocktail, are you the first one to take a sip with me, yes or no? I'm in. I love gravy. Oh, you're in. All right. Steve Ray, are we taking part in a gravy-imbibed cocktail, yes or no? I am sitting here right now drinking a gravy and Coke, chasing it down. <laughs> that is a such a lie. Mashed potato <laughs> smoothie. That is a, mass, a mashed <laughs> potato smoothie. I believe that, by the way. Uh, David Huff, are we drinking gravy imbibed cocktails, yes or no? Can't do it. And when we get to my segment, you'll understand All why. All right. So he is out of that for sure. All right, uh, let's go ahead and start with Doug this week for the hot takes. Uh, Doug, tell me what you got. Man, I have to thank Fast Eddie for being a perfect straight man for my take. I was like, babe, he's saying everything I was going to talk about. But anyway, (laughs) when I was at the Houston Livestock and Rodeo show this weekend, I came to a realization, and sometimes I'm a little slow on the take, but I went into Champion's Corner and... I was hit by something. Barbecue is becoming like polo and horse racing. Fast Eddie said NASCAR, but I think polo and horse racing. Um, There were five huge rigs. Each of the teams in Champions Row had a huge uh, trailer. Um, One was even a double-decker. And I forwarded you a picture of that, uh, of Champions Row, that you can kind of see that. But um, uh, unfortunately, I believe... We're reaching the pinnacle of barbecue competition due to it becoming an elitist hobby. Hmm. That, and I think, I, and I hope I am wrong, but uh, to me, uh, Fast Eddie may, you know, mentioned a few, but uh, my four main factors are, number one, it's next to impossible to cover your investment due to the low cash for, uh, cash for prizes for winners. Everything's a fundraiser. It's always about the kids, my, my least favorite saying. And, um, uh, you know, lack of corporate, you know, if it's about the animals, I'm in. But if it's about the kids being a childless uh, couple, uh, I'm not in on that. Yeah, screw the kids, no. right, Doug? Is that yeah, what you're screw, saying? Screw exactly. the kids. Exactly. That's right, great. Exactly. Unless it's Christmas and then I'll donate my Christmas gifts. Number two, <laughs> high dollar to entry. You know, like Fassi was saying, you know, you got to get these meats. And someone was texting me tonight about heritage chicken and et cetera. Um, And, you know, we talked about it, I think it was it last month in terms of, you know, the barbecue classes uh, that uh, I was a proponent that, uh, you know, you need to go to judging as well as, you know, go to some barbecue classes to kind of accelerate the learning curve as fast as you can. Number three, the dollars required to compete, including getting a nice rig or two or three to store around the country that I like I heard this weekend. I know Darren Worth does that and a couple other people too. Uh, an RV, one of the rigs in Champions Row was for sale for a mere $53,000 because he had already bought an, an, a brand new RV and his rig in Champions Row was only two, two uh, years old by, by the way. But he's already bought a new RV and a new trailer, a 20 foot trailer to pull behind that RV. So uh, custom pits, et cetera. So, you know, the cost to get in is, is just really high. 
And um, it could be a passion, you know, bar- competition barbecue. This is number four. But you can't have, really can't have a day job to be and compete at the highest levels for long. You know, the, the team of the year, I mean, look at Travis Clark. He's he's left his job and now he's, you know, going in a different direction. Um, the consistency, the need to get, you know, sponsors, etc. When I started in 09, we had a borrowed pit, had one tent in the table, a cot, and we used pizza bags for Cambros. Things have changed. Steve, what's your feedback on that? Well, when I go to contest, fellas, I see I see uh, primos. I see people spending the night in tents with their families. I see people sleeping under pop-ups on on cots, snuggled up in a uh, sleeping bag. I see all types of uh, rigs. I see all types of uh, cookers. I, I you know I don't. I don't think it's being ruined. I think it's a it's a natural progression. I know when we started, we we started with a trailer, a, an old shop truck that we had, and then we moved up to a uh, we've got a little very humble food truck, but it's very comfortable. And uh, I don't spend the night outside. I I pull up and uh, get set up, and I go spend the night in a hotel, and then I uh, I come back and cook that morning. So I don't I don't I don't see it's being ruined by the big rigs. It's fun to look at the big rigs, and I think it. I think people that come to barbecue contests maybe gravitate more towards the big rigs, but as far as it um, as far as it ruining the competition, I don't know. I just think it's a natural progression of the. Uh, if you're going to stay out there a long time, you want to be comfortable. And uh, the older I get, the uh, less likely I am to sleep on a cot snuggled up in a sleeping bag. I'd rather s- be snuggled up with my wife at the uh, Motel Six waiting to get up. Steve, let me ask you this follow-up question and answer, then I'll go back to Doug, and then, uh, David, I'll come back to you to to get your idea on this. Maybe Doug's point is, you know, it doesn't have to be like that, or maybe all the people aren't that, but maybe the expectation is being set that in order to be at the elite level or in order to have a chance at really winning more times than not, depending on however many competitions you're going to enter over the course of the year, that you have to have a toy hauler or a 50-foot Prevost RV, and you have to buy all the high-end meats, and that the uh, cost of entry to give yourself the best shot at winning seems to be almost insurmountable now unless you have all these other things. Do you think that that's a a fair statement to make? Uh, No, I don't. And this is the reason why. It's been Mm -hmm. an expensive sport since I started five years ago. I, I think it was expensive when... I watched reruns of uh, Barbecue Pitmasters from 209, Doug and, and Greg and David. It's, it's always been an expensive sport. The one thing I do think I hear at contest running through the participants is the judges have no idea what you're cooking on. So you may be cooking on an S, uh, Smoky Mountain, and you may be cooking next to a, uh, a, a Myron Mixon water cooker, but that judge does not know what you're cooking on. Now, the taste of the meat, now there you go. That is that is one thing that I think has been the game changer is the proliferation of Wagyu brisket. Not so much the pork, but the, the brisket. And I think that does set the brisket people apart that cook uh, Wagyu. I, I think it's a, it's a superior tasting meat. I've tasted it. I've tried to cook it. Uh, I cook better prime than, than Wagyu. But, but be that as it may, I, I think the meat would set you apart a little bit. But, I, you know, it, it has it didn't up my game getting a trailer over the <laughs> over the you know, over the it, over the old uh, tent. I can tell you that, uh, Doug. Is that so? Is that kind of the point that you you think that people might perceive that you need all of these things in order to really have a shot? Yeah, it, uh, to me, it's it, it is becoming elitist from the standpoint of when I first got in, and this is maybe more uh, uh, typical in Texas. You know, maybe. 20 percent 15 20 percent of the people would have rvs you know and sleep on site etc now i'd say it's more like 60 or 70 i'm still old school i sleep in my suv in my back of my jeep and i i'm fine and uh, when my wife is out we sleep in a in a tent but uh you know the the proliferation of the money needed uh from a perception standpoint perhaps as well as reality is that it has increased always love to give David or get David's take here on this because he's kind of newer into the world of competition barbecue. So, uh, David, I would love to see what your expectation of what you need to have in order to be competitive is. 
I completely agree with Doug's take here. Um, fortunately for my wallet, I found out very quickly um, <clears throat> that you exactly what Doug's talking about. I showed up to my very first contest with a borrowed smoker, uh, a tent with some walls around it and a heater, and I was all excited to go out and you know win this contest and show what I can do. And I'm walking through the yard and I see a guy literally walk around on the back of his rig, get a remote out of his pocket, hit a button, both doors like butterflied open French door style and there was a smoker on each side and I'm like are you freaking kidding me uh, there is no way and then of course it was 42 degrees and sleeting rain and we're outside huddled, huddled up underneath the a canopy and, and a lantern, or I mean, uh, one of those heaters that you said you got for Christmas, Doug, and I mean, Greg, and yep. man, it was miserable all night long. I was completely dead when it was time for the turn-in. The people that had the big rigs, the, R the RVs, they were absolutely at an advantage, not to mention the cost of the meat. I was cooking a, you know, a Costco brisket and now that I know about Wagyu and all those things, I don't think there's any, you don't have a chance at all if you aren't doing the premium stuff, having the better cookers. I think the days of the guy just borrowing a grill and throwing up a tent and having a shot are gone. And as far as it being prohibitive, I was sitting around with my buddy saying, you know, just this last weekend, I said, I really would like to try one more contest. I've honed my skills. I know so much more than I did uh, six months ago, a year ago. I'm like, let's just get together, cut the cost, try one more contest. And he said, David, I'm not doing it. It's not worth it unless we win. And, you know, the chances of that are, are just one in 100, one in 200. He goes, it's not worth it. So is it not enjoyable to split those costs and just go out and do it because it's something that you like versus having a mentality that you have to go out there and win in order to make it worth it? That, that was my argument. And he said, you know what, then let's have a neighborhood barbecue. Let's mm -hmm. invite our friends, our family, the people that we care about and, and just do that. Even the people's choice. That's not about how well you cook at the contest I've been to. Uh, the contest I was at last time for the People's Choice Award, I thought I put out something, a really good product. And the team that won, they were there saying, vote for us and we're donating our money to children's cancer. Now, while I think that's a great cause to use that to, you know, win a, a People's Choice vote, it... I mean, even that part of it is just, it's unattainable. People are there on a popularity contest versus how well you cook barbecue. So are you on the way out of competition barbecue, David, then? I don't want to be. I would like to find a friend to give me a chance. I'm pretty frustrated with it. I know I can't spend any more money. Um, you know, I bought my first Snake River Farm uh, steak this weekend and cooked it, and it was absolutely, no question, the best steak I have ever made. It wasn't even close to anything I've cooked before. And I know why the Wagyu briskets are winning. It totally makes sense. But I spent less on meat in my first contest than it would cost me to buy a Wagyu brisket for one contest. Mm. All right, uh, David, we'll stay with you. What's the hot take? All right, well, just like uh, Fast Eddie teed up Doug for his topic, Greg, you've teed me up for my topic tonight with your uh, talk about barbecue waistlines and drinking gravy. Yeah, get the fat drop ready because that's what I want to talk about. All right. Okay, so barbecue guys, it, it's obvious that there is a struggle with the waistline in the industry. Greg, what was the first size of shirt that you were out of on the horse meat? t-shirt giveaway it was 3xl <laughs> there you go and which i believe is uh, what they call diet. uh i believe that's what they call barbecue medium if i'm not mistaken <laughs> <laughs> and i know there are skinny guys in barbecue don't get me wrong but if you walk around a contest for a large part no pun intended uh the waistlines are big and I've been on the keto diet for, well, I brought it up last time uh, we had our segment on, so for a month. And the food I've been able to eat was extremely enjoyable, and it, it includes barbecue. And I've lost 20 pounds and hope to keep going, and I have not missed any of the, well, I've missed some of the food, but I've not 
not enjoyed my meals. So keto is 75% of your calories from fat, and particularly barbecue meats. They love the short ribs. They love the brisket. They love the fattier meats. You're training your body to burn fat as fuel instead of carbohydrates. So, for instance, I'm traveling in the night uh, for my real job in Conway, Arkansas. I ate at Fat Daddy's Barbecue, and I had pulled pork, ribs, brisket, <laughs> and two helpings of green beans, and it was completely on my diet because I didn't have the baked beans. I didn't have the potatoes. Um, and it's just been – the energy level is amazing. I think it's something that barbecue guys can do because we love our meat. I, I can have bacon, eggs, and avocado and cheese in, for breakfast. I just have to avoid – you know, the carbohydrates and uh, any types of sugars. So if you can get that out of the way, you can keep eating barbecue, keep enjoying smoking meat in your backyard, and maybe we can do something about the waistlines in the barbecue industry. And there's no limit in the amount of ribs and pork and whatever else as long as it falls within this keto, or does it have to be a certain portion each day? Sure. It's not exactly like the Atkins diet from years back where you could just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat all the greasy fat and cheese that you wanted. I mean, you should limit portions, but it's uh, when I say limit portions, I, I eat until I'm full. So should I throw down two racks of ribs? Certainly not. But actually, some of the hardest part of following this diet, Greg, is making sure I get enough fat in my diet. I need to get nuts, throw throw nuts on things or avocados and cheese, getting uh, peanut butter in there. Just as long as you're avoiding the carbohydrates and, and eating within reason, um, I'm certainly not taking a, a, you know, a diet plate and a salad where I feel like, oh, man, I'm going to eat again in an hour because I'm starving. And you're down 20 pounds in a month. Correct. Good for you. I like that. Thank you. Uh, Doug, what do you think about uh, fat barbecue guys? Fat! <laughs> well, my first contest uh, that uh, I participated in in September of uh, 2009, we, um, uh, we were lucky enough actually to get third overall, a second in brisket and third in, uh, third in ribs. And uh, actually, uh, gentlemen, you know, Darwin Howell came yep. up to me. And um, uh, before barbecue, I used to be a competitive tennis player, but I blew out my knee. So I used to be able to eat whatever I want, whenever I want, et cetera. And chips and queso and hot sauce are a, a main food group for me. But um, he came up to me and uh, said that, yeah, he used to be my size and play racquetball. But then he started doing competitive barbecue. And I promise you, I joined a gym the next week. And I have been at that gym for three to four days a week um, for, what, the better part of seven, seven eight years. So um, I, still, I still do that. Um, it's interesting in terms of David's uh, take. Uh, I have actually cut out chips, flour, tortilla, and bread. So I have reduced the number of carbs now. Am I... Uh, Eating uh, what, uh, Steve? What do you call them? Pork buttons or you know burnt swine pork cubes, swine cubes, swine, swine cubes, cubes <laughs> whatever. I don't need, you know. Sounds like uh, David. We might need to incorporate that as a regular mainstay in the diet for the fat. But um, uh, I ha I've actually lost eight pounds doing uh, giving up chips uh, as a, one of my mainstays in flour tortilla. You know, down here we have to have our our bre breakfast tacos. So. Uh, the flour tortillas are, are quite common. But, um, yeah, I, in terms of I do get a little worried about some of the people in the barbecue uh, industry and, and uh, people at competitions just from the standpoint of uh, their health and, and going forward. I mean, I, w I cooked one event in uh, – uh, when I went to the Zach Brown Band and cooked a, an event there, and one of the guys that was uh, coordinating it, he said uh, – after a few cocktails, he said, uh, no offense, but uh, you don't look like a pit master. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, that's fine. Wait till tomorrow. And uh, But uh, anyway, that that is a perception that people have is that, uh, you know, and, and people have that about chefs too, right? What's what's the saying? Never yeah, trust never a skinny trust chef. A, never trust a skinny chef. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, it would be good. Maybe that needs to be put into the rules of KCBS or IBCA, et cetera. But um, 
I am finding some success in it, but uh, I'm not doing it uh, super rigorously, it sounds like, which uh, which David may be. Uh, Steve, stand by. We'll get your opinion here in just one second, and then we'll also go ahead and get your hot take as well. Uh, but first, before we do that, I'm going to talk to you quickly about the newest sponsor of the show, Traeger Grills, TraegerGrills.com is that website. So uh, as we were talking with Chad Ward earlier in the first hour of this show, a couple different product lines or uh, grills to choose from. You have the Pro line, which is, uh, according to Chad, kind of that entry level or entry into pellet-fired cookers. Chad has cooked thousands and thousands of pounds on these Pro line grills. So if you're not ready to make that big commitment for a timberline model the 850 or 1300 you want to test it out first you want something that is reliable something that's going to cook food very well then that pro series of grills something you might want to be taking a look at a good price point for entry as well now if you want the tech if you want big capacity if you want the latest cutting edge technology then you're going to want to look at that timberline grill the 850 or the 1300 as we were just talking about the thing that I find most impressive about this is how in the combustion portion of it, they have, Doug will correct me here after we get out of this break, but I believe it's called like the constant blue smoke technology or the fresh smoke technology. And they have figured out a way so that there is constantly this great, fresh, flavorful blue smoke that is circulating around the meat. It is sucked from the top all the way down the bottom and then out of the back. You're not going to find your traditional exhaust stack like you would see or that you would think you would see on some of these cookers. It's exhausted right out of the back after it's been pulled from the top all the way down, across the meat, and then out the back. Super smoke technology as well because, you know, a lot of pellet cookers get that stigma for not producing enough smoke. So this is going to help you in that regard as well. Don't forget, when you are online with Traeger, you have all of that technical stuff that you might be looking for totally cloud-based solution they got pellets they got accoutrements accessories all that stuff so you head on over to traegergrills.com that's traegergrills.com check out all the products find a dealer where you're at locally and then if they got a shop class around you you want to see what the pros are doing or learn how to use those grills a little bit better sign up for a shop class as well You never know who's going to be teaching one of those. Could be Doug, could be Chad, could be DBQ, could be Matt Pittman. Who knows? TraegerGrills.com. That's TraegerGrills.com. We are back with the second portion of the Embedded Correspondence right after this. Stick around. Continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by Fireboard. Monitor up to six different temperatures simultaneously. Connect to Wi-Fi or cloud-based monitoring or connect via Bluetooth. And if you have Alexa or the Google Assistant in your home, you're in luck because Fireboard fully integrated with both. Find out more by visiting fireboard.com or call 816-945-2232. Fireboard.com. Thanks to the folks at Fireboard and their sponsorship of the show. All right, Steve, we left off with you. Uh, Your thoughts on barbecue and dieting at all. I feel like I'm on an episode of The View or something like that. <laughs> what are, are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about heavy flow and what kind of paddle you use? That's next, right. Next no. <laughs> I'm going to talk about childhood issues here in about five minutes. Yeah. But first, hey, your Doug, thoughts. Hey, we're, we're having a big we're having a big barbecue uh, contest here. We're going the uh, it's for the. Uh, Fat Kids League. We want you to come down. <laughs> just, uh, just for yeah, the, I'll be a spokesman. Kids. Yes, yeah. not just it's the perfect. kids, but the fat kids. kids. Great, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I'll donate yeah, a lot. The only of money. one way. Sure. Only one way to lose weight. You got. Uh, you got to burn more calories than you take in. Everybody, everybody in barbecue could probably use a little, uh, lose a little weight. Uh, I'm just worried, David, that Travis Clark's going to kick you out of Oklahoma and send you to California or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, what's your hot take? 
My hot take is I have been all over this new National Barbecue League. I've been following these guys on Facebook for the last old oh, two, two and a half weeks since uh, I found out about them. And I like this. Fellas, I like this a lot. These are ten guys that have gotten together. And it's mostly a Midwest thing right now, and that's why their contests are when they're not really going to be in the southeast or in California or the northeast. It's pretty much a, a Midwestern group of guys that have gotten together. And they're going to be – they're going to have like little tournaments within a KCBS event, and um, and I, I think that when they when they start pulling into these contests, when all ten of them get together, I think it's going to be a a very highlighted event. I think they're going to be fan friendly. I think the fans are going to want to talk with them. Uh, they are going to do demonstrations. I've talked with a couple of guys that are going to be competing in this uh, National Barbecue League this year. And uh, I am excited for barbecue because what these guys are doing are things that that all of us have uh, wanted to see, more interaction with uh, the crowd, uh, a more exciting type of uh, contest. And I think this is one thing that will bring people out to contests is when you can say, we've got the National Barbecue League all these ten superstars, and they are—they are superstar cooks. They will be coming to this contest. Come out and meet them. They're going to be doing demonstrations on Friday night, and uh, you can taste their food. Uh, they'll be doing hot and fast cooks. They'll be doing steaks. They'll be doing barbecue. Come out and meet them. Uh, you bring your children out. I think this is going to get back to something that Fast Eddie said that will make this thing a more family-friendly event people will want to bring their children they'll want to put down their cell phones maybe and taste the steak that's been cooked by Travis Clark and uh, I'm just I'm really excited about it I think what these guys have put together is is something that's a little bit outside of the box and uh, I'm excited to see how it's going to work and I hope that they uh, they keep promoting it they're doing a great job on Facebook so far of uh, having people on it they've had uh, Luke Darnell Cosmos Cues Tim Shear Blake Hunter and one more. Let's see who was that. No, those. Are, that's about. Um, that's about the ones that have done. Uh, they've shown special videos. I don't know if you guys have seen them or not. Uh, Tim Sher did a uh, thing on how to trim a competition pork butt, which I thought was great. And Luke Darnell did one on how to trim chicken for competition barbecue. And uh, they're very informal or very informational rather. And I'm excited for these guys. I think it's going to be great for our sport. David Huff, let me go to you for your first reaction. As somebody who's kind of teetering on the edge of competition barbecue, do you have any thoughts on the National Barbecue League? Yeah, so I hadn't heard of it until uh, Steve had told me about it prior to coming on. So I, I went and looked it up, and in theory, it I think it's fantastic, Steve. I completely agree with you. Um, a lot of the events that I have attended, not as a cook, but just going to the contest – other than walking around and sitting in the park, sitting on your blanket or throwing a Frisbee waiting for the People's Choice stuff to be served, there's not a lot at a lot of these barbecue contests that brings people out or things to do. And I think if there was some you know, exhibition, if you will, and an actual chance to interact with these guys and find out how they do what they do and why, I think it's fantastic. I, I guess my question would be, these guys have all been at contests before. A lot of these guys you mentioned have even been at some of the local ones in Oklahoma. Um, you know, how are they really truly going to make it different, and how are they going to pull it off in the middle of trying to do the 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 actual cooking for the barbecue contest? Um, I mean, logistically, I'm not sure how it will work, but in theory, I, it, it, I'm excited as well. I can't wait to see some of these guys and interact more with them at these contests. David, so this is how it's supposed to work. There's going to be 12 total events planned for this year, 2018, plus the series final. Each team will receive points for the first eight events in which they compete, plus double points for the final. Scoring will occur in the overall and in each meet category. It will be calculated based on where each league team finishes in relation to each other. The top finishing league teams will receive 10 points. Second will receive nine on down the line to a minimum value of one point. Two bonus points will be awarded to a league team that wins a grand championship or category win at the event. And one bonus point will be awarded for reserve grand championship 
and for second in each category. Points will be added up for overall and each category with the highest totals being declared winners at season's end. All ties will be settled by the highest finisher at the final. So that's kind of how the events are going to be run within the events, as uh, Steve said. Does that make sense to you, David? Yeah, and I had read that, Greg, and understood the scoring a little bit. Um, so it sounds like they're just essentially keeping score within the score. Yeah, uh, They're keeping it separately of the people in the league. The part I'm curious about is, I mean, these guys, when it's time to get focused on the turn-in and do their cook, I mean, they're serious business. There's, there's not interruptions. They're sticking to their timeline. They're prepping their boxes. They're doing those things. I'm just wondering at what point in the weekend, unless they come in early, are they going to do – the interaction with the crowd and stuff that Steve was mentioning, because that's the part I think would help bring people into it. Doug, your thoughts on the National Barbecue League? Well, uh, yeah, being at Houston Rodeo, the, the, a lot of those teams have their big rigs, and so they'll have to move them in early. They'll get there Tuesday, and they'll have plenty of time Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So, um when I heard about it, it actually made me a little sad from the standpoint of, and, and, and I do mean that uh, sincerely from the standpoint that I don't have an axe to, ax to grind against KCBS. I don't hear or know a lot of things with KCBS, but dad gummit, it would have been perfect if KCBS would have listened to some of the, the cooks and gotten them on board, brought them in house, and KCBS taken, taken the lead on this sort of thing. So uh, I think from that standpoint, it is a little divisive. It um, it's kind of a sad state of affairs that the cooks have to take it on upon their own to to create this sort of league and to do a lot of the things that they've been suggesting, um, at least as I understand it, for for a while, and you know, bringing the public more into it. So I, I actually think in the short term, I'm. Uh, yeah, I think you know it's going to take them a while to, to get it up, to get it up and up and running. But um, one of the things that um, I certainly don't like is there's no Texas component to this. The you know in the in what they say they're going to go strictly by KCBS team of the year. So that, that basically precludes all of Texas. And again, that's just another segregation divisive. Uh, I would rather, I like in Texas that we're starting to, to get, you know, all into the IBCA, that Gulf Coast, you know, combined in, into IBCA. And then, you know, uh, unfortunately Lone Star is, is, is kind of a dwindled to a certain extent. And, and, uh, so I like it that IBCA has kind of become the, the big gorilla. And, uh, I wish IBCA and KCBS would, mm-hmm. would form something that would be a little more, uh, cohesive. So, um, uh, I, th- I think for those two reasons, for the long term, man, this sounds like uh, it's made for TV, and uh, it sounds like it would be great to have a TV series following this and replace all the barbecue pit masters and and kind of build this up, and hopefully that would bring in some more corporate money and more money into and uh, notoriety and visibility into the competition barbecue because as i mentioned earlier i think we need that because we're not getting new people into the into competition you know i think that uh, the national barbecue league and i'm going to look at it from a bunch of different angles and as always be very contradictory of myself i think that you know from a from a very high level this seems a little bit of hey look at us we're better than you um, I think that all the teams that are in this have certainly more than justified how good they are, especially as it pertains to KCBS judging and scoring systems, and, and certainly there's no taking away from that. But I think in the con- – so here's the, the, the devil's advocate question here. If those 10 teams are going to plot out 12 different competitions where I guess they all have to agree that they're going to show up to all 12 of these events – If I'm a competitor, if I'm Doug, or if I'm Steve, or if I'm David, and they're all coming to an event that I typically go to, and maybe this is just me thinking the way I do from a competitive standpoint, I'm thinking, F that. There's no way in hell I'm going to go to that contest because it is stacked. 
I'm going to go like an hour down the road and go to you know North Texas, or I'm going to go to Ulawa, Tennessee, and cook there at the Lamar Jackson tournament, or you know, it's a. Uh, there's no way I would show up at any of these events. I have to imagine that some teams are going to head for Z Hills, as I heard someone just say, and uh, you know that could cause a little bit of a detraction as far as team count is concerned. Does anybody think that? Uh, team count might suffer because you're going to have some of these big dogs rolling into uh, a dozen contests. Doug, do you think that'll be an issue? Yeah, I actually think it uh, think it could be on Chad's show. Uh, Griff was talking about how he tried to cherry pick a, a contest this weekend yeah. uh, and going to a smaller you know contest to 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 uh, try to get a GC. So you know that 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 happens now. So um, and if it is such a big deal, and 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 I agree, you know it is. It does kind of uh, initially. That's why I said in the short term, I'm I think I'm against it. But in the long term, I think it could actually be great for barbecue. But uh, it does have a feel of like a, a little bit of an exclusive club. One of the long term things that they have on their website is that they want to have regional yep. type tournaments. So you know, so that other people can or other teams can get in. That has kind of a Sam's Club feeling, or at least terminology to me, wording. So, um, you know, maybe they're they're trying to take over some things that are, you know, now missing from from uh, competitive barbecue and and bring them back in. But uh, uh, again, uh, KCBS should have taken the lead on this. I, I do think that there is, I think there would be a little more of a of teeth in this if somehow they were able to get outside of the KCBS judging altogether and and make and maybe that's a, as you're talking about Doug maybe that's something that's going to happen in the future where National Barbecue League spins out all on its own has their own sanctioning has their own rules and judging and all this stuff and then it will be this entity that we've kind of always talked about here over the last 5 6 7 years is there going to be a true professional league maybe this is going to be the National Barbecue League here over the next couple of years or so uh, Steve, do you see any concerns from a, an attendance standpoint on teams, or do you think most of them will be like, hey, this is an area I can go and go up against the 10 best? I think that's what would happen. I, I looked at their uh, at their schedule, and, and there's not really a, a contest that's close enough for me to get to. I would love to compete against those guys, and I know I would not I would not do well, but just the fact that's what's so great about our sport though you know you know we can enter we can enter a contest and you can compete against Myron Mixon you can compete against David Bosca these people that you see on television mm-hmm. and you admire and you watch you can you can go and meet them and then mono mono with them I, I think it's a wonderful aspect it's, it'd be like it'd be like getting to hit against Sandy Koufax. You know, it, you know, it would just be fantastic to try it, and we can do that in our sport. And, and I would love to go head to head against these guys. And, and you know, I've gone head to head with these guys, and they've and they drilled me. But you know, someday, one day, guys, I'm going to catch lightning in a bottle, and I'm and I'm going to get it, and I'm going to get it. So I, you know, might as well be against them. Steve Ray is the embedded correspondent for Tennessee. Doug Scheiding, the embedded correspondent for Texas, and David Huff, the embedded correspondent for Oklahoma. Gentlemen, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much for doing it. Thank you so much, Not Greg. I'm going to go, go practice my curling now, There Greg. you go. Go curl. Go <laughs> shoot up with Winstrol and uh, make sure that you do it properly. <laughs> Cheat to curl. That's what I always say. Cheat to curl. All right. Another successful embedded correspondence segment down. Let me talk to you quickly about the National Barbecue and Grilling Association's event coming up in Dallas-Fort Worth. March 15th, 16th, and 17th. Once again, I will be doing live shows Thursday, Friday, Saturday, noon to 3 local time. On Friday, Chris Lilly is already in. We also have uh, somebody else that I can't think of right off the top of my head, uh, Sam Jones. Uh, Sam Jones Barbecue. We'll obviously be talking whole hog with him. Also have uh, Chad Ward lined up. I have... Jess Pryles uh, lined up probably on a Saturday. Sean Walshef will be lined up on Thursday uh, towards the last segment, I believe. Or maybe that's Friday. Cali Comfort Barbecue and host of Barbecue War Stories, of course. Guys who provided me uh, with the hashtag Meatman shirt. Stover and Yoni will be on the show as well, uh, maybe Thursday. So... 
Jam Pack Show. Also, Myron Mixon uh, will be on the show as well. Mike Mills will be on the show as well. So we're loading that up. I hope to have a more defined itinerary for you before we actually head out there so you can plan your listening days. It will stream live on Facebook. It will also stream live on YouTube, and it will stream live on my audio stream on my website. Again, that's the National Barbecue and Grilling Association's annual conference, Dallas-Fort Worth at the Stockyards. Check it out. We'll be back right after this to wrap up the show. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you've found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rempe. Email from John Dawson. Remps, I'm sure that you remember that just a few years ago, the barbecue big dogs were looking forward to the NASCARification of barbecue with great anticipation. It was the supposed promised land. And as Doug said, we're here and it ain't that promised land. Uh huh. Thanks again to Doug Shiding, Steve Ray, and David Huff. Texas, Tennessee, and Oklahoma, respectively, in their embedded divisions. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not teetering on the National Barbecue League, but you can easily see because uh, pe- most people in barbecue are uh, what I would refer to as the JBs or the jealous bastards. And they want to be included, and why not me, and blah, blah, blah. But I do think that to a certain extent that the National Barbecue League is trying to pull away from KCBS as much as possible and do some of the things that all these cooks have said they would like KCBS to do. I think it would have more teeth if they could get away from it. And maybe it just doesn't have that ability. And I do think you will see attendance drop in some of the events that they're going to be in from the sheer fact that people aren't going to want to go up against it. You know, one or two teams, okay, 10? Probably not. So they might be finding other places to go. We will certainly keep an eye on that. I'll be looking to get some interviews with the folks at National Barbecue League. Also, you know, if you race down the top 10 in 2017, some teams aren't on the National Barbecue League. For whatever reason. Maybe it's travel. Maybe they don't want to be a part of it. I don't know. But, you know, it's not the straight up top 10. So we'll see how it unfolds here over the next weeks and months to come. Right now, we'll go ahead and wrap it up all the way back in the first hour. We talked with Chad Ward, Traeger Grills, the marketing manager there for the barbecue division. TraegerGrills.com is the website to check out. New sponsor of the show. We also talked with Ed Morin, barbecue legend, Fast Eddie, creator of the FEC Cooker, Cookshack.com. He's partnering with them, of course, to make those cookers. He's going to be racing race cars in the desert in just a few weeks' time. Eddie, I forgot to ask if you were going to be at NBBQA in mid-March. I will be there as well. Maybe we can catch up if you are. Second hour, embedded correspondence segment. Doug Scheiding from Texas, David Huff from Oklahoma, Steve Ray from Tennessee. Talking about dieting, talking about we have reached the pinnacle of competition barbecue and you need to be loaded in order to be competitive anymore. And of course, we ended with the National Barbecue League talk. Big show planned for next Tuesday, so I hope you're planning on joining me, however you listen. September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. And until next Tuesday, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.